Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. And we are live. So welcome to a Coffee with Karen, a cup of positivity with just a sprinkling of woo-woo, although... Uh, more recently, I think we've been having a couple of tablespoons of woo-woo, <laughs> a little bit more. Uh, I think we're coming a little bit back down. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is one. so in general, my guests tend to be in the coaching or healing arena, uh, whether that's for the mental, the physical or the spiritual perspective or a combination of all three in general. Um, so your host, my name is Karen Roberts. Um, I suppose I come from that fitness and very physical side of healing background, but now I tend to actually coach other coaches and healers to actually build their business uh, online. So it's for me, it's fascinating to hear everybody's stories, you know, how they came to be doing what they're doing, you know, what was their why. Um, and I hope it inspires people who are listening um, if they're struggling with anything that these wonderful guests can help them with. So, Dean, if you'd like to share with the audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, and share a okay. bit of your story. Okay, thanks, Karen. I really appreciate being on here. So, uh, my, my, my story started oh, a long time ago, early 2000s, and my whole reason for where I am now, which is holistic health, is the fact that we were told that we couldn't have kids naturally by medics. So we tried for five years, you know, the usual thing, just casually, you know, it'll happen at some point and then it didn't happen and it didn't happen. And then we went to the doctors and, you know, we're told that, you know, we'd never have kids naturally. The problem was mine. All three areas of the issues to do with, you know, sperm count and motility, mobility, all that kind of thing. My my guys were all hunchbacks and they couldn't swim basically. So it's you know it was one of those one of those things, um, and it was devastating at the time. But we didn't give up hope. We thought okay, from a, because we're very much in a me, like that medical place at the time. We tried IVF twice. It failed twice. It didn't work. In fact, my wife Joy was in agony both times for whatever reason. Um, so that that mentally it take, took its toll as well, but. I'm I'm a, I'm stubborn. <laughs> I think there's got to be a way. There has to be a way. This can't, you know, everyone else is, you know, having babies left, right, and center. Why is it not working for us? I know, you know, I had an issue, but there must be a way of sorting that out. If not medically, then what else is possible? So I started reading. I started reading nutrition books. Uh I, I think at the time I didn't really understand nutrition. You know, you just if you can if you need it or a supermarket sells it, that's okay. How, mm. how wrong that is and that's what i found out so i mean back in the day there was no real social media to be uh, to be spoken of or heard of so yellow pages came out we'll find a nutritionist so i found a nutritionist locally and she blew our world apart she just told us you know how what was going on i was you know i was, i'd struggled with a blocked nose for years i was lactose intolerant never even heard of it um so i had an inf inflammation that way uh, I was eating, you know, you were just, I had brown bread, you know, skim milk, you know, that was the, the government guidelines of, you know, of health, which was just rubbish. You know, yeah. I was, eating, so you're eating wheat, like in every meal, whether it was sandwiches, whether it was cereal, whether it was bread, sandwich, you know, everything was wrong. And she, like, we went home that night after seeing her and we looked in my cupboards and the cupboards were full of stuff, just nothing to eat. We're like, it was a, it was a massive reality shock. And so with renewed sort of optimism, we started looking and it was very tough back then. There wasn't very many free from aisles or, or there wasn't much on a free from aisle in a supermarket. We were lucky we found a kind of a holistic health food shop, which wasn't that far from us. So we were able to sort of adjust the diet, but it was a massive, it was a massive um, change. It was a, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a big struggle. We stopped drinking, we did all kinds of things. Um, that was between the first and second IVFs. Second IVF didn't, work but then i was i was I said reading books i was contacting the book authors asking their advice i was yeah. looking at what else i could learn uh that's when i discovered patrick holford books i bought every patrick holford book and read them cover to cover that was like the, he seemed to be the main man at the mo at the time um and then i found a book from a doctor called marilyn glenville was the solutions national solutions to infertility 
And when I read that, of course, it was the same lines, but she did consultations or she had a team that did. And so we worked with her um, for a number of months, you know, changing the, like we did like the hair mineral analysis, seeing what we're deficient in. Uh, and the, the really sort of guided us from a supplement uh, perspective, not just the bog standard ones, but uh, they give me specific tinctures, you know, herbal tinctures and that kind of stuff. Three months later, Joy was pregnant. Wow. And it was, and it was massive. It was, it was one of those things where we didn't believe it. Joy knew there was something different. Um, so she went and got a pregnancy test. She felt like she needed a pregnancy test. We came back positive. She didn't believe it, went back in the shop and bought another one. Uh, just to make sure, because we just started a third round of IVF, like we had frozen embryos. So we didn't know if it was like a false positive because of the drugs that she was starting to take, because it was only right. like a week in. So we contacted the fertility clinic and said, that's not possible. So she said, like, that they won't give a false positive. Come in on Monday uh, and we'll, we'll scan. And she was seven weeks pregnant. Incredible. Well, I say incredible. I, I, you know, it shouldn't surprise me anymore. Yeah. It's just goes to show yeah. that the recommendations to keep us healthy yes. may possibly need looking at. Would you agree? Just, yes, abs absolutely. And yet, you know, nearly 20 years later, because my son's 18 in September, uh, and this, the guidelines are the same from the government. So nothing really has changed there. I know no. in the world it has because there's so much, you know, it's so much easier to get this information. Yes. Um, I think nowadays it's sometimes too much information and it confuses people. But hundred percent, there'll be you'll you'll hear research, um, you know, you know, science backed stuff yeah. on one side of the equation and something completely contradicting it with also science backed info. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, and where, where do you go? Where do you look? But exactly, at least we can all agree, I think, that what we have been told for the last, whatever, 60 years, yeah. uh, however long it is, uh, maybe I'm sure it's longer, actually, um, is not working, no, right? It's, it's not. really not working. It's not helping people's overall health. I'm sure it's having a knock-on effect to their mental health. Absolutely. Um, but I'm sure there's, uh, there's other people that are thriving because of <laughs> it. Yes, well, well, exa exactly. And I, the thing is, that wasn't the end of the story either. Um, when Joy was pregnant, it was obviously great. But as soon as she realized she was, she what we thought was morning sickness. So she was very ill. She felt physically sick constantly. Uh, so we tried all manner of things with that, from uh, meds to homeopathy to supplements. The only thing that worked was homeopathy. It took it away for a certain length of time, which is very interesting. Uh, but when it didn't go away and um, we went to see that a consultant and she put on like the, the, the most powerful anti-anxiety meds again, we're like, we're looking just grasping at straws and it didn't make a difference. We realized that it was more, it was anxiety. So the pregnancy had created anxiety with Joy and as a result, she ended up in hospital for five months. Um, mm. Just because she was struggling, it got to a point where she had to go in a hospital because she was, she didn't want to be here anymore. She was she was in that much, like it was it was bittersweet what happened. Right. So we're gonna try for so long for you know to for the pregnancy, yeah, sure. and then the pregnancy caused something that was it was horrible. It really was, and so five months plus our lives were just put on hold. I I was working in IT at the time, and so I was able to just stop working for you know a number of months. Luckily for me just to be able to support Joy, but she just struggled with that. And because of that impact for so long, it took her quite a while to get past that. And I just kind of locked all my emotions away just to be be there for her. And I wasn't dealing with my own stuff. Uh, right. which was, you know, And I was reading books on trauma. I was reading books on mindset. I was reading books on anxiety. I was reading all kinds of things, just trying to understand what was going on. And, and just now looking back, I understand so much more, but then I didn't know anything about this stuff that was going on. And so I was like, I was again relying on medics to help, which right. they didn't. They just didn't. It was just they again. They don't link. They don't link no. how you're thinking and feeling no. to the physical state yes. of, you know, the, the, the knock Absolutely. on. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that then led me not only knowing about nutrition and understanding what health really was, but understanding that it wasn't just about nutrition it wasn't just about the physical side of it 
There's the mental side of it, the spiritual side of it, the emotional side of it. All these things tie together. Uh, and for me, they're all synergistic. And you see people working on one or two areas. Yeah. It's usually the move, you know, move more and do a diet type of thing. And because that focus is on losing weight, instead of understanding why they've got the weight in the first place. Yeah. And that's that's the deeper stuff that I'm interested in. That's where I was led from from the from there to here. Fantastic. I mean, this is you know, it's interesting you say that because it, it does seem and and I mean it's quite incredible that you went down that route or you I mean you something happened with you for, for you to really delve into that yeah that long ago, 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Because in general, what we tend to find is because we are just looking at maybe the physical manifest, you know, manifest, oh, you can't get pregnant or you've got a yeah. headache or what, we tend to want to just go to a doctor yeah. and be prescribed a tablet to solve that problem rather yeah, than, and I get it, I'm not putting doctors down, please don't, I'm no. not, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm saying the system is, they're working their poor butts off. Um, yeah, they don't agree. get any time with people. So the system itself is not working because they're not taking in the whole person. Yes. And so it, it's quite, what What do you think then made you sort of start to look in that direction? I mean, because that, you know, that long, that time ago, and if you don't come from that, that world, you've just come from IT, something yeah. must have made you you know, even go that way because most people aren't going to be putting all their faith in their doctors. Yeah. Well, at the time, even though I was in IT, I did a lot of training. I did a lot of reading about training. Uh, so, you know, I was quite active then. I did a lot of martial arts. But also probably, probably when I was in my teens, my mom was suffering from, she was bad with her nerves. That's what the label was, which was depression and anxiety. And I watched my mom suffer a lot had all kinds of uh, procedures, you know, like shock therapy, all kinds of things. And I remember my mom being so medicated one day, she didn't even know who I was. And I think that was always right. there. The fact that I couldn't help us, so there was a frustration there, but I was also kind of angry because I was a teenager and my mom wasn't being my mom. And I know that wasn't her fault. She was struggling, yes. but I didn't know how to help her. So there's that frustration with me. And I think that's why, that's when I really started I turned to the physical side of training and exercise back then that was more of an escape rather than, you know, uh, this isn't going to happen to me. I think it was just I need to get away from this kind of thing. Right. OK. Yeah, and that think, makes a lot of sense. And I okay. think that from that kind of thing back in my teens, that's probably been that seed that, that, seed that was planted. Yeah. You, 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 you saw what your mum went through when she went to. Yes. There. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Maybe nice. this. Something else, which um, it is, you know, it's brilliant that, um, that it worked. I, and I definitely think like you, I do 100% believe that everything mm. is solvable. Yes. What, I, what we find is that, unfortunately, sometimes with certain ailments, whatever they may be, yeah. sometimes it's some people have just left it too late to yeah. even start to explore, you know, Western medicine is fantastic for, um, you know, emergency use or, you yes, know, absolutely. if it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's come on for too long and something needs to happen now, fantastic. But the long term stuff, maybe we need to explore all the other other avenues. I'm, I'm yeah, totally I would agree. behind you. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. that. Yeah. So and you think... decided, so, yeah. you, so this has happened. So what made you choose to then okay go down that route um and leave the world of it behind um it was a realization one day that, I, that all the stuff that i'd accumulated all the knowledge i had i could actually help people with it i was having i was having more and more conversations with people and people were just struggling in general uh, and i remember because my wife's a lot like me she's you know she's very physical and she you know she looks after herself as well i remember at one point when i was in it either like getting her a personal trainer and handbook saying you should do this this would be really good for you not even thinking that it would be you know it was it was you know something that I would love to do as well and I think it's like it got more and more to that point where I thought you know it is IT is okay but all I ever do is read about nutrition read about mindset like read about training experiment and all these things see you know with myself and I've seen the results of you know obviously life 
giving. Uh, so I thought, you know, this I'm going to do that. So I just took the leap. I just said, right, that's it. And I, I created wow. outdoor fitness camps at first in 2010. Um, that was the, the, the weren't really a mainstream thing there. I knew a few people who were doing them. I thought I'm going to do that. And then that progressed to having my well, sort of subletting a, a martial arts center near near where I live to go indoors because I knew I could do more. And then I then I got to a point where, and I've still got the gym, but I knew that I could reach more people online and I could see because of my experiences of like shutting myself down emotionally when Joy was ill and like trying to like help her, but I wasn't helping myself that I wanted to give something back to men. I was starting to see because I was allowing myself to feel and feel emotions that, you know, I was repressing them just like most guys are kind of conditioned to do culturally, you know, we just push it down. Don't show them it's a weakness. You know, you just got to deal with them yourself, but with any kind of energy, you know, I always say energy in motion is emotions. Like we've got these emotions. And I know you've heard that. You'll heard that before. But if, if we're repressing emotions, they will flow somewhere. And if that's a kind of physical pain or it could be some kind of disease or dis-ease, you know, then it's then that's, and that's going to happen. And I can see that these guys struggling because, you know, they, they want, I can see people, especially men, I can see them they, they need some kind of help, but they're, they're either too proud or they're, they're too ashamed to admit that. And so... That's when I start my coaching online to start moving towards, okay, I want to help these guys. I want to help these guys deal with themselves and find out who they really are instead of pretending. Because anytime we have uh, emotions, when we are, it could be any time, it's usually when we're younger. If we have some overwhelming experience, overwhelming emotion, we don't deal with it. We kind of push it down and repress it because it was painful. But just like when we don't cross the road because it might when there's a car coming because you know that might cause physical pain or you know, do something that's risky or dangerous we don't apply the same thing to the emotional realm and so when we've got emotional pain the body still does the same thing am i safe you know if we're triggered there uh, and it, you know we react to something emotionally our brain says i don't feel safe so we build up these beliefs and stories to take us away from this 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 discomfort this emotional pain but we don't deal with it so we just then build these uh, unhealthy habits, I suppose you could say, anything from alcohol, drugs, you know, gambling, emotionally eating, whatever it is, we'll then create that. We'll kind of fire and wire it in my brain to when this happens and we feel this, it's not safe. It's, you know, it's a stress. So we go and do this instead. And we get, it's called the amygdala hijack. We just get hijacked. We it's, just automatically do this thing. It's just, a, it gets, and this, it, you know, what, what, what I what I find is, what is sad is that people really believe that it it's never going to change. Yeah. And it's just because it's a habitual pattern for them. Yes. Just like anything, you know, yeah. start, you know, they start in a, a workout or going on a diet, or, you know, anything yeah. that requires a change. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think almost sometimes that is it. It doesn't even matter what the change is sometimes. It's the fact that we, we again, going back to this, we are conditioned to if we have an ailment, mm -hmm. we just go to the doctor, give our power away, get them to tell us what's wrong and give us a tablet. Yes. And in the same way, it's almost we might want a different result, but we still want to do the same things that we've been yeah. doing that yeah. gave us yeah. the ailment. I mean, it's, it, it is crazy, but I suppose we're all, we're, we're human beings. That is the way we're wired. We are yeah. on autopilot. Yeah. So it doesn't make it, you know, we're not bad people for doing it. It's just habitual. No. We don't know yeah. what we don't know. So yes. for you, I mean, I think this is in, incredibly important. Um, for people, especially with what's gone on in the last couple of years, there's, you know, the awful things that have been going on. Yeah. And men have definitely suffered more. And I would say, yes, yes, right back to what you just said there about men tend to suppress more. Us women, we don't stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true, but yeah, always you feel it, you're more open about it. We release it because we'll have yeah. the moan, we'll have a you know, have a bit of a rant, get it out yeah. of our system. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. you're yeah, I, I yeah, I think that is a major, major issue what's happened in the last couple of years where men have just so struggled to deal with what's happened. Yeah. Um that 
Yeah. So what 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 you're what you're doing there is a, a phenomenal service to 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 yeah to let men know that there's no shame in it. Yeah, Man, there's yeah. no shame in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And and yet it's it's so so painful to contemplate that they will do anything and everything to move away from it. I mean, sometimes, thankfully, men get to that point where they think, I need help. And it's like, right, I'm really struggling with this. I don't want to keep going through this depression or, you know, feeling anxious all the time or or feeling unhappy all the time. What, what's really going on? And it always starts with awareness and saying, okay, you're not alone. It's, it's fine. It's normal. We are human beings. It doesn't matter whether men or women. We're human. We still work psychologically and physiologically the same. But we get to look at what, what the deeper reasons why we feel that way. And it's, you know, in men, it's, it's really delving into that discomfort those icky feelings that we don't want to feel well we don't want to i mean unf- no. it's, it is an unfortunate thing isn't it i suppose i <laughs> yes. mean i suppose I, I i get it from a okay you know many years ago thousands of years ago it was probably essential for life yeah um to have these things in place however <laughs> this is 2023 <laughs> why can't we just tell our mind you know if we just had this switch where we yeah. could just sort of tell ourselves this isn't working anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's and it's okay. It yeah. is okay. Yeah. But and do you think um, you know, stress, cortisol, I mean, that, that obviously that's gonna have an added impact because they are constantly in this fight or flight uh or freeze mode. Yeah. To get men to open, I mean, how do you do it? How do you get men to actually open up and admit that maybe, yeah, they need a little bit of guidance through this? It's real because usually the thing of it's what like, they see stress and overwhelm burnout. The, the, most men are sort of relate to that because they do as they get stuck in their heads. They, they're not used to being in their hearts and their bodies. They're not allowed, they're not so they listen to thoughts, even though we're not our thoughts. Sometimes we blindly accept the thoughts we have instead of objectively just watching and observing instead of engaging. But what men don't do is get down into our bodies and listen to our hearts. Because obviously the emotion realm hasn't got a voice. It's got a sensation. It's got a feeling. And it's showing, well, bringing awareness to men that we've got to start listening to what our body's saying. And what our body is saying is in sensations and in feelings. And they're not always right or wrong. Sometimes we label things wrong. We attach an emotional, you know, some emotional meaning to something. We create a drama. You know, we can, two people can look at the same thing. And have a completely different reaction depending on their past experiences. So it's really about understanding what those emotions are. And it's not really about reliving the emotions either, because all that does is we just relive the events. Yeah, I've we never really to do thought that. that. <laughs> exactly. But we do want to start, we'll allow ourselves just to sit in the moment and feel that, you know, those discom- you know, this discomfort, the uncomfortable feelings, and be able to almost marinate in those sensations and understand that they're not, they're not bad. I might have labeled them as unsafe or, you know, as stressful, but if we can be counterintuitive, I suppose you could say, and say, okay, I know, you know, we're designed to run away, you know, the fight, flight, or freeze from this the stress response because cortisol is fired. But what if we just breathe through it? What if we just allow ourselves to, you know, allow this to wash over us? And if we can yeah. do that for all the, or whatever triggers or events that we come up against, we're just what we're doing is we're rewiring our brain and saying, "Look, it's not dangerous after all." We're, mm. we're it's about it's, we can't run from anything because it's part of us. So it just it just goes along with, for the ride with us. We've got to stop and say, "Okay, let, let's let's sit with this," and just having that it's it's just having the courage to do it. Just saying, "Okay," and take, just taking the stress off it. You know, everybody, stop being so hard on yourself. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Give yourself I, a yes, break. Absolutely. Yeah, forgiveness is a massive thing. Just you know, and I, I wrote that wrote about that in my book because I, I talk about that how we'll you know we'll easily forgive everything else or everybody else, but but when it comes to ourselves, we'll just not forgive ourselves and we'll be so hard on ourselves. And so we're gonna think, you know, would you really treat your best friend like that or your wife or your you know or your kids in that way so why are you doing that to yourself and it's just yeah. You know, yeah it's okay not to be okay sometimes what where do you think this all comes from i mean yeah we we are we you know if yes um i i would suggest maybe that pretty much everyone at some point or other 
the way they talk to themselves, like yeah. you say, far worse than, you know, they wouldn't dream of talking to, to, to their enemy the way sometimes yes. people yeah. speak to, yeah. us, to ourselves. Where do you think this comes from? It, it, I mean, I know we're sort of, it does seem that we've been conditioned, I don't know, through the, must be through the school system or our peers uh, mm. of, it. it's always about, I don't know, it's minding the ego. It's all about how you think. Yeah. And we've somehow become detached from putting the importance on how we feel. Where, But why? where do you think this comes from? I think that these days especially, there's so, many, there's so much distraction in the world. We don't allow ourselves to sit with ourselves and just be. We're too busy doing to be to be being, I suppose you could say. Everyone gets in this have, do, be thing where we've got to have to do this, you know, to get to so I can be this person instead of just saying, okay, we've got everything we ever need right now. We can be who we want to be right now. And then we get to look at what we are allowing to, you know, I always say happiness is a choice. And to, you know, happiness comes more and more when we start cutting loose the things that makes us unhappy. And we'll kind of run away from the things that makes us unhappy instead of dealing with them. And then we kind of, we'll try and load more and more on, on us. But if, what if we just start letting stuff go? If we can just stop, stop trying to be distracted. And, we, and we, we do that a lot because we don't want to deal with this internal stuff. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do, go internally and really sit with yourself because then you've got to look at the reasons why you think you don't look very nice or you don't like yourself or you don't like part of yourself or you don't like your life. Or, you know, these are the things that we get to look at because it might be a reason that we haven't challenged. It might have been something that happened that we moved away from when we we're seven year old you know, that we didn't like, it could be a bad relationship with exercise, it could be a bad relationship with food. Something mm -hmm. happened at that point, and then we, we create these stories and beliefs around, I don't like exercise. I don't like, you know, healthy food because you were mm. trying to force fed it when you were younger. We've got to look at the deeper whys. Because it's, it's like, I always say the thing is not the, never the thing. You know, the surface thing yeah. that you know, presents itself, it's never it's never that, it's something deeper. I always look at, you know, what what makes that unhappiness. You know, yeah. what's driving that? What's the deeper driver? So for me, it always hinges for from the emotional realm for me. Because uh, yeah, we... I, I really hope that people are actually really getting this because yeah. I, I mean I get it. We we want to run away. It, it's a human, mm -hmm. we yeah. are human uh instinct to want to run away from pain. It, that's a Absolutely. it's not very nice, it's uncomfortable, it hurts. So let's run away from that. And it's it's yeah, it, uh, it's it's something that people. Uh, I agree, but something that people need to to actually face. And yeah, I mean, distractions. Well, funny enough, I think well, it's about eighteen months ago. We uh, mm -hmm. the TV broke. I think a bulb went, and I thought I'm not. I'm actually not going to get another one. Yeah, it's the best thing. Uh, people think I'm absolutely crazy. It's the best thing I've ever done. I could watch. You know, I've got a laptop. I could watch uh, Netflix or Prime if I wanted. Yeah. I just cannot watch Terrence. I can't get distracted by the absolute rubbish that is on. Yeah, and I have to say the, the difference in how I feel. Yes, um, is pretty phenomenal. I, absolutely, I, I haven't I haven't watched the news for a long time because you know misery sells. News is always about misery and all that kind of thing. But if you spend so much time around this stuff, you become it. It becomes part of you. And I see it all the time. I mean, parents, my parents read the newspaper. They watch every news bulletin. And you can see where they're, they're coming from and how they're reacting. And I just think, oh, why are yeah, you why? watching this? Why? It's just, it's just, it's pointless. But so many people get caught up in that because they think it's important. But for me, it's always about where you place your attention. Can you place your attention in a healthy place? bearing in mind how many things are trying to take your attention away, both externally and internally. And it's bringing that awareness. Is, I was talking to somebody last week, for example, about promises. And I said, do you actually keep the promises you make yourself? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, every day when you say even the little things, you know, you're going to get up at six o'clock in the morning or you're going to, you know, make a nutritious breakfast or you're going to do 10,000 steps or whatever. It could be a big thing, a little thing, get to bed by 10 p.m. I thought, Have you actually done that or did you create an excuse or reason or justification why you couldn't and he said oh i've never thought of that and he wrote stuff down he said wow this is the amount of things that i said i was going to commit to and i didn't do and i made up a reason 
And I said, every time you do that, your self-confidence and self-esteem erodes. It goes down because you're not fulfilling the promises that you made for yourself. And it doesn't have to be the big grand ones, which everyone faces, the subtle ones. It's always the subtle ones that get you. So if you start looking at where your attention is, and it's the same mm -hmm. with, you know, when we have, whether it's criticism or it's adulation, you know, someone praises you, we still allow them to take control of our emotions immediately. Even though it's a nice thing, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but but if we were aware that someone's taken our control yes. of our emotions for a minute, for a week, or someone criticizes you and, you know, it might be an off-the-cuff remark, and a week later, you're still feeling the effects of it. Oh, them some, people, some people will still be going on about it, won't they? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, we all have those friends. Yes, we do. <laughs> when, whenever we see them, it's just like this constant. Yeah. yeah. And you just think, oh, you know, if people understood that, you know, without being, because some people think this is a, a horrible thing to say, that, but, but we're doing it to ourselves. Yes, no. But then it's empowering, isn't it, Rob? You know, some people can't can't get their heads; they struggle with that that idea yeah. that actually we are, yeah, doing all this to ourselves because I, I, we want to pass the blame or yeah, you know, Absolutely. it's because of that. And 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 I know for some things it's it's, it's a bit of a difficult one. It can be a difficult one to to yeah. deal with, but it's empowering. So really, what you're doing is you're empowering men. Yes. That's You're it. empowering it's, 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 men. Yeah. Create the change that are, that are struggling in in what I mean for you. I mean, obviously, your personal story has been about um, you know, obviously, not being able to get pregnant, so that side of things. But yeah. do you what who who else would be your sort of you, you know the type of man that you help or the type of issues that you help them with? Well, the, the issues really are that I work with them. Um, I label them as successful and men who've created their own businesses, maybe entrepreneurs, maybe the head of businesses. Mm -hmm. These men are, are sort of driven because otherwise they wouldn't be successful. But usually, not always, it's to the detriment of their health. So they might, okay, right, they've got tunnel vision with this, but then they don't exercise. They don't make that like important. They don't make nutrition important. They might be out all the time entertaining clients and eating rubbish food or drinking too much uh, because, or they are working so much that they don't have a great relationship with their partners or their kids. And these are the guys who are driven usually because of some kind of deeper emotional event, we'll say, which they haven't dealt with. And they'll not even be aware of it because it's unconscious. So mm. I always use those like removing internal self-limiting emotions or self-limiting beliefs. You know, you can, they, they're interchangeable. But it's just, for me, it's not, they're already successful, but what else is going on? that drove that sometimes they're driven because they're they're not running away from something but they're moving away from something because if, when their head is in this area they don't have to deal with this and so mm. i'm not saying all successful men are like that they're not but you no. know it's the men who are hard, struggling who don't deal with their emotions who aren't sort of really thriving i suppose you could say they're not fulfilled they might get to a certain point and they think yeah. right when i get a lesson i'm a certain level of success then I'll be happy and fulfilled. And then they get there and they're not. And then they're not. So they're looking for something. I mean, I, I mean, if we all, again, as humans, what they, we need something to aspire to. However, yes. I yeah. love what you said just there because, yes, it is a case of, again, it's putting, it, everything is putting off. You know, I'll be happy when I yeah. lose that weight or I'll be happy when yeah. I make that next deal. I'll be, no. <laughs> what, right. what may, shouldn't we just be happy now? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I do believe happiness is a choice. Yes, it's in motion and it's transient. We get to choose that and we get to let go of what makes us happy. Right. And I think well, well what you're te what you're teaching them then is, or what I'm hearing from that is yeah. the fact that, yeah, we again we rely on, we think we're relying on other people, that person yeah. is gonna make me happy. Yes. No, it's gotta come from it's gotta come from you because that's yeah. Yeah, that's what, you, that, that, that's what you are. Nobody can give you happiness. <laughs> no, no, it comes from within. It definitely comes from within. So we've got to deal with what's making no, that not allowing that to happen, for whatever mm. whatever reason that is. And I think it's important to understand that. And it's it's almost like an awakening as well. You know, this awareness, you kind of wake up and realize, hold on, I've, I've done all this stuff, and I'm still in the same place. What's really going on? What's real? 
what's actually you know and that's that's where the empowerment comes in it's more okay well, let, let's let's explore these four areas you know or do we have an awareness of this are you practicing this is are you really delving into you know these emotions you know i've worked with you know countless guys and there's always some kind of deeper driver and it's and there's always an energy around it. and it's just about clearing that energy the energy is the emotion the feeling but you know whether it's uncomfortable or not by clearing that away we we disassociate the beliefs and stories we've created to take us away from that uncom uncomfortable feeling once you allow yourself to process through those emotions or sensations then you know the brain doesn't need to hold on to these i suppose barriers shields to keep you yeah you know it's safer or in a, in a certain way so it's it's very and I, I think recently i was talking to a guy who was really struggling he wanted to get this he wanted to do this and he wasn't getting it done and then we're just sort of talking about his family and then it turned out it was to do with these you know he's never seen his dad since he was 13 and there was a there was energy there was pain around that and he was trying to aspire to you know like aspire just to get back into his dad's life to try and you know find seek approval and that was right. this guy was in his 30s of or mid 30s i think and yet right. he was still working from his young teen you know his teen version of himself was driving these these deeper feelings and sensations and but he wasn't moving past it and it's just right. it's just these little like bring these awarenesses and again it's, it's not so much exploring that time but like allowing the person to feel whatever comes up whatever emotions because when you can have a conversation i can usually see when someone something happens that you know the shift in the seat they're uncomfortable the, you know the yeah the well you try not moving. to you know yes. i could yeah. be i could be watching a film my, my daughter will look at me she can tell i'm gonna cry she says my my nose flares up but, she, <laughs> but because you're trying to suppress yes we, we, we've been I mean, I know there's, there's other cultures where they don't, they allow it, you know, it's yeah. like funerals, they're wailing. Yes. That's a good thing. They're releasing it. We yes. are have somehow, don't know why, have been taught to, you know, keep your emotions, so, you know, and it hurts, doesn't it? What is the yeah. feeling when you try to stop yourself crying? Yeah. It's painful. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it takes a massive amount of energy to stop that. It does, doesn't it? And it's not a nice feeling. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's, it's, and it's an interesting thing, as you said, when you feel that stuff, you think just let it out, but there's this conditioning that just you know, yes. that doesn't allow it to happen. Yeah. And it was just like what you were saying before about responsibility. I think, you know, when I talk, talk to people, I say, you know, everything you've done up to this point is your fault, which stings because it stung when someone said that to me a few years ago. It's like... No, and you you immediately want to lash out, you want to blame, you want to do and you just stop and you think, right, because as I said, it is empowering because then you get to take responsibility for that. You can take all of that back. And once you do that and accept that, then you can do something about it. But if you keep giving your power away by blaming, then you're all always forever going to be in the same place. Yeah. And that I suppose that is the victim mentality. And it yes, and it's and it doesn't again, it's not about that makes them a bit, they're not bad, it's just awareness because they don't yeah. understand that they have the power. Yes. Um, and that things can change. And I just think it's such a, it's just, it seems such a shame because as like you said, right at the beginning, you believe everything and, and good for you for keeping that, you know, having that belief mm. and keeping going to that everything. Yeah, I'm there. Every, everything I believe is, you know, pretty much yeah. solvable. Yeah. Um, and 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 how amazing if you couldn't actually just then it's a lot easier, isn't it? If you could do it, do it yourself. I mean, everybody needs help. But yeah. um, how, so how do you work? How do you um, get these transformations? How do you work with people? So with me, it's it, there's four areas of health. So that's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all synergistic links, like four pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. So I look in all of those areas to see where people are. So I'll do a health history at first, just get a good baseline of where someone starts because everyone's different. Everyone's different in all those four areas. So I want to know exactly where they are. So understand where their environment is, understand where their health is. I used, as I said, different health questionnaires and exposure, exposure questionnaires because I always look at awareness in areas. I always look at, you know, like what we're, the emotions or the energies around things. I look at the mechanics of things, which is the physical movement. I look at the nourishment. 
I look at the environment that people are in internally and externally. So we can be affected. And I look at those areas every time I'm, I'm coaching, but there's always tasks to look at. So if, you know, if a lot of people struggle with food or, you know, they just blindly eat food without, ex, you know, understanding how it nourishes them, they, they just, they just eat to stop that hunger, hunger pang, you know, mm-hmm. so they don't feel hungry. They don't, they don't bring an awareness to whether they're, you know, nourishing their bodies or not. So it's looking at, you know, where they are presently. Some people have got a really bad relationship with foods. Uh, so we look at that. And if there's any energy or emotions around that, then we clear that. So if we, if we look, I look at um, human design as well. So I look at, you know, everyone's uniquely different and how we work. You know, there's different energy types and all that kind of thing. So, you know, what might work great for me might not work great for you and vice versa mm-hmm. because it's just who we are. So it's just looking exactly where they start. Then from there, it's about clearing the roadblocks. So it's the, any emotional stuff because it's always the emotional that trips us up. If we feel unsafe, that's a stress response. And of course, when that happens, our thinking rational part of the brain down regulates, it switches off and we go and do what we did the last time because your brain wants us to react. So it's about looking at those reactions, those emotional, you know, the attachments that we, we have to things, clearing those triggers out. The more we can clear those out and give, you know, and give everyone the tools to do it themselves as well. So with practice, they can actually then, you know, realize when they're triggered, realize when they feel stressed, realize when they're going to go do this. They can feel the energy around it and allow that to be processed out. So they then don't react that way. They're almost, well, they are, they're just rewiring themselves. And of course, then from a nutritional perspective, that supports everything because we need good food to support the body, to support the brain. Movement, of course, not just to keep fit, but obviously muscle tone for our immune system because our lymphatic system needs our movement to be, you know, in optimal condition. Uh, the mental aspect, looking at, you know, our, like our thoughts, you know, or challenging our thoughts and beliefs about things that we have. So all these things are in, you know, and it's it's quite, you know, although I've got a framework through those four areas, it's still quite bespoke on a week to week basis because right. I don't know what's going to come up. Everyone works in a different pace. You know, I could say it yeah. might take 12 weeks, but if you are unwilling or unable to deal with some emotional stuff, that might take four weeks to process. That might take four weeks yeah. to be guiding people. And so everyone's different. And it always comes back to understanding there's no magic pill. There's no quick fix. You know, as we said before, it's we it's, we'll go at the pace that you're going to allow yourself to go. Right. Uh, and and uh, it, that does seem to be... Um, the theme isn't it it is just we totally are you know all these sort of quotes that you hear you know we're just in the instant gratification era we yes. want it now yes whereas with a lot of things they people anybody would understand that you know you plant a certain seed that will take that time to grow or you you know if you want to lose three stone it's not going to yeah. happen after your first body pump class right you know it takes time you know there is a there are laws of the universe you know there are certain things in this time space reality that yeah you can't cheat (laughs) (laughs) and 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 if it if 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 one thing's that way with the body why wouldn't it be with the mind as well you know absolutely because like you say it's so easy look i do it myself Uh, you know i will say to myself and it's quite you know i was thinking oh I, you know, I break promises to myself a lot, yeah. you know, you know, when I think, oh, well, I'm going to go out and, and I'm going to have, I try and do, go outside once a day and, and then have a workout inside. But sometimes I wake up in the morning, I think mm, I could just sort of go back to sleep rather yeah. than get out and yeah. go for my little run around, r- little run around the park. And it is, it's catching yourself in that. And that's because it's an automatic response. Yes. And it's only when, again, it's becoming, con, you know, trying to stay, I suppose, in the present. Yeah. Because if we want change, it is in the conscious mind. So to be consciously aware, yes. like you say, I suppose, yeah, the awareness is definitely step one. And if you're not on them, I suppose, as their coach, to keep yeah. them in that, con- we will all, Again, we are all human. That's how we're made. We will resort back to old patterns, which means we will break that. Yeah. If we don't make that conscious effort in the beginning yeah. to do the changes long enough for it to take over from the. And habit. Absolutely. And 
from from a habitual behavior perspective or habits you know yes there's an argument in this you know the studies well it might it'll take 21 30 days 60 days but it, it, that's you know if you've got an emotional attachment to that yeah the, the change can be immediate so it's a, understanding the emotional attachment of why it's important and again that's why it comes back to the emotional so because we might do something mechanically over a period of days, but then as soon as you're stressed, you, you jump back because you haven't processed the deeper, you know, reasons why you did it in the first place. Right. So it's being able to look at that and say, okay, I'm keep doing that. What can I do? Sometimes, you know, when you're in a stressful place, we, we, a lot of people relate to stress. You know, they have a stressful day, they come back and they reach for the wine, the chocolate, whatever the thing is, without just stopping and as I said, catching it, bringing awareness to it. Yes diaphragmatic breathing belly breathing is one powerful way to be able to you know bring yourself back from your stressful nervous system to your calm nervous system we can do that but there's other things where you just you're aware of um the feelings that you're having and instead of reacting to the feelings you actually sit with the feelings and you actually say okay i'm actually going to sit with this and i'm not going to allow that to change how i you know the outlook or what i'm going to do so there's a number of things that you can do but for me, it's it's awareness, then taking responsibility. So a lot of people t- have an awareness, like, oh, I'm three stone of a weight. It's January. I'm creating these New Year's resolutions. Take action. And then they do every, try and do everything. And it lasts a week, two weeks, three weeks max, because they can't, <laughs> they can't change all those habitual behaviors all at once. You can't do that. And so, of course, they rely on willpower. Willpower is an energetic response. And we haven't got that kind of energy. It's finite. And then we just fail and so as I said it's about this long term okay I'm going to change this habitual behavior I'm going to drink more water I'm going to have you know a nutritious breakfast whatever the one thing is and do that for a, a, a period of time then move on to the next thing they're, they're the they're the simple things that we can work at and then any kind of you know energy or emotions from a stressful place that come up then we get to take responsibility so it's awareness instead of going from awareness to action we have awareness take responsibility to make that change, then act appropriately. And I think that that responsibility means that we can't blame that diet didn't work. This person didn't help me. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So how long have you, so how long now have you sort of, you know, totally changed? Where where did you give up the IT? (laughs) 2010 was when I jumped ship. Wow. So this is quite, uh, and so how happy are you that you, left the IT <laughs> well it was one of those things that you realize that you, you um it's your calling you know I was really like I was going through the motions IT but all I ever did was as I said read and study and do all these other things and I thought why am I not doing this for a living so that's what I did and then you know that was the health and nutrition and the, and the exercise but then I realized that people were struggling with the mindsets so you can tell them to do the thing but they wouldn't do the thing because of stress because of life gets in the way because you know it's not necessarily you know you're strong enough why it's you know it's understanding what try what tries to prevent that why in dealing with that so that's when i looked at you know i looked into neuroscience then i don't understood why the brain did what it did and why we get reacted in these times of stress then i looked into the the emotional healing stuff and that was that was when I, the penny really dropped as to why you know sometimes have people have the information but they don't do anything with it or even yeah, like awesome. mind, you know what i mean so if we all just did <laughs> what we know what yeah. you know if i could just yeah oh man, man where we were there, there'd be no no issues it, it's 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 quite a mind it absolutely fascinates me um and trust me i'm not you know i haven't perfected any you know this is a journey right you know absolutely. you learn and do and learn and do and some things in some areas i think oh i've i've, I've got it <laughs> yeah and then there can be other areas where 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 you, where you don't i mean it's such a and 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 you know, the fact that you're doing such a bespoke service, because yes, we are all so different. We are all so different. I mean, I know, you know, that's the basis of homeopathy as well. Yeah. Like you said, the homeopathy worked with you. You know, all these things are based on the fact that yes, we are, there. there's going to be differences. And at the end of the day, we are, you know, we're just the sum of our own experiences or, you know, yeah. or maybe more the reactions yes. that we took yeah. totally naively and innocently when we were children yeah. to those things that can, that can affect us in in later life it's it's just a 
you know, coming away. And I, and I, I really hope that people are starting to, I think they are starting to question and coming away from, there isn't going to be one size fits all, you know, just like yeah. going to a doctor, that one tablet that they're prescribing for that symptom is not going to work for, for everybody yeah. else because we, we are, we're not machines. Nope. We are complex beings. We're all spiritual beings, and we, yeah, we need it all covered. So, for the for the listeners, I mean, it, wherever you're watching or listening to this, um, Dean's all Dean's details will be below if you're on the website or YouTube or whatever. But just for the listeners, for the radio yeah. show or the podcast, um, how would they get in touch with you? Where would they find you? They'll find me on, well, I'm on social media. So on, on social media, I've got a website, deancolson.co.uk. Um, and my book is available on, on, on Amazon called Thrive. Uh, and again, that talks about the four elements of health and being able to put these four elements together synergistically. And there's lots of information in there. A lot of what we've talked about today and a lot more. And, you know, I really believe that I didn't want to write a book that you just read and put down. I wanted something that you could read cover to cover to get a good understanding of how things sat together, but then you could go back to it and refer to it. So there's a lot of tasks, there's a lot of exercises. You know, I wanted I wanted people to get a lot from this book. I wanted I wanted it to be that well used, you know, that it was, you know, it was right. um because because we're never gonna nothing's gonna change from reading something once. No, absolutely not. I I read books over and over, I'll listen to books over and over and over, you know. Um and because you, you're always in a different place, you always get a different lesson when you listen. You're always ready for a hundred percent. Well, you, yeah, I, mean, I think we just sort of, you know, we we could just switch off. You know, I can find myself, and you know, and, and I can switch off to things. I might be reading it, but I'm not really taking it in. And so the next yeah. time I read it, I'm a little bit more present. Maybe, maybe that's what yeah. it is. Yeah, I'm more present, so I'm actually absorbing it. And and you just, yeah, you 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 read it again, and you think. <laughs> yeah. I don't, or I have a different understanding. Is that actually today? Um, I was driving around and I was listening to um I can't even think who it was, Doc, Dr. Robert Anthony, I think it was. And I've heard it over and over and over, but I probably haven't listened to it for I don't know, six yet years. And I listened to it today and it I don't know, maybe some of the other stuff that I've read or listened to since then. Yeah. When I listened back to it, I had a different understanding of it. Yes. It's like, oh, okay. So it is. It's it's like you 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 need to this spaced repetition is is how we learn to to read something through and then yeah do it again. So many people just read something once or watch something yeah. once and then they think oh, they've made their made a judgment of it. Yeah. And they haven't really given it enough, you know, of a go. To, yeah. It's, if you want it to change your life, you need to read it a good few times. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Repeat your website again, deancolson.co.uk. Well, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So yeah. for the for the guys out there, if anybody's sort of struggling with what again, what is your sort of? So you go. So you tend to work with um, quite high achievers in, yeah. in so in that area of business or finance yeah. that are struggling. Yes. Maybe with, but how would somebody, um, I don't know, what would, what tends to be, is there a common issue? Is there a sort of a, a common, common underlining issue that, you know, make them make the decision to come and see you? I think what, what it is, is like they get to a point where they know this is not the answer. Right. I've done this and this, you know, you know I'm still not happy. I still don't feel fulfilled. What else is there? What, and that's when they kind of stop and know deep down there's something not right, but they've just been ignoring it. I think when we, we have those moments of quiet time, you know, if we allow ourselves to contemplate or reflect, we have, we sometimes can have this sensation that something's not right, but we don't know what it is. And it's just bringing that, like, I think it gets to that awareness point. Sometimes it's, the thing. it's one thing, it's another thing. So a lot of high achievers relate to stress, overwhelm, burnout, Obviously, that's in a stressful place. Yeah. But why are they in that place? Why are they driven to that point without dealing with whatever else is going? Why aren't they dealing with the health? Why aren't they dealing with, you know, why aren't they exercising? Why aren't they eating right? Why aren't they not dealing with their emotions in the right way? Why are they driven away 
from dealing with that stuff. So sometimes it's just about talking about, you know, why am I stressed all the time? Why do I feel burnt out all the time? And exploring that. And then right. that leads to, you know, sometimes, because a lot of people don't know what they need. They know what they want. Yeah. But it's, it's you know, it's down to us as coaches to then like sort of read between lines. I can usually look at when I'm having conversations with people, it's like a matrix, you know, you see this kind of thing filtering down the screen and I can kind of see what's driving the, you know, the conversation, you know, if people are talking right. about stress, for example, or we'll talk about this and they might mention the family or, or something's going on. I can say, ah, okay. I can see exactly where right. that's been driven from. It might be from shame. It might be guilt. It might be some form of um, seeking approval, even as high achievers, we still do that. I know I have, you know, right. um, and, and it's, the emotional stuff's very interesting. I, I found things that you we might be aware of all this stuff that's happened in our past and not realize that anything's going on. But if we have a conversation, like when I was talking to you earlier, I felt some energy come up when I was talking, telling you something about, oh, I've got to clear that later. Because oh. when we're have, actually having this conversation out loud, that's when you're allowing this kind of movement of energy. And if you can f- like feel the sensation, you think, oh, there's something to clear there. Your body's trying to tell you something. It wants you to listen to this interesting that actually because uh, was I talking to somebody they, um you know sometimes you know we, we can have again we we you know I'm sure I'm not the only one we have these stories or we have these yeah, conversations yeah. in our own head yes and then yeah sometimes it can be just when people get it out <laughs> yeah sometimes yeah. that can actually just be enough they needed to um, yeah absolutely that said it they maybe yes. they never even and sometimes it can be something from the past that until they say it and then yeah. they can look at it as an adult and go oh <laughs> and the yeah. realization to themselves that that could be holding them back and it is it's just such a mind it's I find it absolutely fascinating. So a quick, quick uh, story, just because you've just reminded yeah. me. Five, six years ago, I was talking to a fellow coach, and we're talking about emotions. And I was telling him about when I was little, I was in hospital when I was two or three year old to get my tonsils out. And I, I was telling him about, and we're talking about, you know, between the ages of not seven, that's when we get a lot of, like, traumatic events, whatever they are. It doesn't have to be bad, like, you know, really bad trauma. It could just be an overwhelming experience that we didn't deal with. And I was talking about when I was in hospital and my mom, um, they wouldn't allow my mom to stay with me, with me in hospital. And I remember I was talking to them, I was telling them about the images I remember, standing in the cot behind the bars, crying because my mom was leaving me. You know, I was in pain. The person who loved me, or I loved the most, was leaving me. And when I was talking about the images, I just broke down and cried for 10 minutes. I couldn't stop crying. It was a massive, I mean, I've known the story. My mom wanted to stay, couldn't, they wouldn't let her, blah, blah, blah. And I've known that story my whole life. And, you know, but when I actually vocalized it. Right. Is that the first time you'd actually vocalized it? The first time I actually talked about it. And I, I was, it was snot bubbles a lot. It was, it was the, it was massive. And then I had this massive energy release came up through my body and out through my head. And I realized that I had an abandonment issue that I hadn't even realized. And that had influenced so many things in my life. That's that incre- that's really incredible. What, yeah. uh, what, 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 well, well, that is the aha moment, isn't it? Yes. To absolutely. know that, um, yeah, something that you think that maybe you've dealt with because you've, or you've thought about it, but yeah, the actual, well, I suppose it is. It's like sometimes when we, you know, you're upset about something and, and you think you're okay until somebody, maybe asks you, yes. you're all right, and you go, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <It just stopped. laughs> yeah. yes, exactly. You know, I was all right. Well, no, you weren't. <laughs> you needed yeah. to release it. Yes, absolutely it's, that. It's, it's absolutely crazy. That. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, look, um, brilliant talking to you today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that whole system. So, yeah, what you're doing for Guy, and I do think there's definitely not enough out there um, yeah. For men and men, really, you know, they really have been that they really have been suffering. They need to be more like just chat, 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 like, like us. No, they never yeah, will they do. be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let it go, let it go. So no, thank you so much for your time. The pleasure, um, thanks, Karen. To any of the listeners, um, yeah, no, there's no need to suffer. There you no. go. That's 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 the moral of today. There is Absolutely. no. It's all solvable. 
so yes. please get in touch so thank yes. you for your time to the listeners um i will be back next week with a coffee with karen bye for now Bye. welcome to the coffee with karen podcast a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs from a mental physical and spiritual perspective get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo